I'm Dale Jackson, and you are welcome to this time of worship. I am glad you are joining us and hope this is a time of peace and nourishment. When we light the Christ candle in a few minutes, I encourage you to have a candle at home to light as well. I do have just a few announcements. Every Sunday morning at 9 a.m., you are invited to join Doug Asbury in a conversation around our intergenerational education theme packets are available. If you would like to participate, use the same Zoom login information you use for coffee time. Starting this Friday at 7 p.m., join us for Fridays with TED. TED is a global community welcoming people from every discipline and culture who seek a deeper understanding of the world. Each Friday evening, we will watch a TED Talk and Doug Asbury will lead the discussion. Our annual congregational meeting is today, immediately following worship. The annual report is on our website. Theology on Tap continues on Mondays at 7. We are exploring faith and what it means to be church with Rachel Held Evans. I encourage you to join us, even if you missed the first two discussions, Rachel Held Evans is an engaging and thoughtful speaker. Today we continue our series on the book of Psalms. Our psalm is Psalm 62. Parts of our service will sound different for this worship service. The psalmist invites us to quiet ourselves, 
and hear God's voice in the silence. So there will be times for us to practice quiet reflection during worship. And now, friends, as we head into the sanctuary, you are invited to share the peace of Christ with those you are listening or watching with and those in the YouTube chat. Friends, the peace of Christ be with you. Give thanks for strong yet tender hands held out in trust and blessing where words fall short let hands speak out the hearts of man expressing My one and only. So many songs have utilized this phrase to express devoted love. This week we see that this tradition goes back all the way to the poets of the psalm tradition. This is a love psalm of trust in the Holy One and Only, who is the rock and refuge in the midst of life that sometimes feels as fleeting as breath. Put our trust in the one who, indeed, is holding our lives. Turn down your gaze upon the earth. Where is the one who never sleeps? We call on one who guards you now. Spirit safe in holy keep. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. God is holding your life. Yes, God is holding your life. God is holding. as I light the candle that reminds us of Christ's peace, I invite you to light your candle as well. Let us pray. God of our devotion, you are the one constant in life. Open us this day to see the things that hold us in their grip so that we might shed unnecessary distractions that keep us from seeing your reign on earth as it is in heaven. We praise you for being our rock, holding our lives together in the ways that matter most. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is, If Thou But Trust in God to Guide Thee.
Good morning, everyone. We've been talking about the Psalms, and every week I've been talking about how they are right in the middle of the Bible, and about how there are five different kind of categories that they come in. And we have um, looked at a Psalm that talked about praising God, and one that talked about thanking God, and today I want to talk with you about one about God's wisdom. So God is being very wise. It is a super, super long psalm. It's Psalm 119, and it goes on actually for one, two, three, four, five and a half pages of small print in my children's Bible. It's 176 verses. So I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. But maybe you want to look at it because I'm telling you it's a really good one. I just want to read a little bit of the beginning and then skip to a verse that I really thought spoke to me. So it starts out, Psalm 119, the Word of God. Happy are those who live pure lives, who follow the Lord's teachings. Happy are those who keep his rules, who try to obey him with their whole heart. They don't do what is wrong and they follow his ways. Lord, you have given your orders to be obeyed completely. I wish I were more loyal in obeying your demands. And then it goes on a little bit later to say, how can a young person live a pure life? By obeying your word. With all my heart, I try to obey you. Don't let me break your commands. So that's the very beginning part, and then I'm going to go into the Psalms some more, to verse 105. And verse 105 says, Your word is like a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Well, I really liked that because God's word is so good and he is so wise. I mean, I was thinking, like, if I was going camping, I would really, really need a light. I would need a fire for cooking and for warding off those beasts that might be in the woods. And I would need a flashlight to guide the way. And God is like that. Your word is like a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. So God's wisdom, the smart things that God has to say to us, guide us like a light would guide us. It's pretty cool, isn't it? And if we go all the way back to the beginning, if we just follow his wisdom and those things that he's guiding us with, we will be happy because happy are those who try to keep his rules and obey them with their whole heart. So friends, last week you were supposed to think of the many, many things you could be thankful for and say thank you to God um, and sing his praises. And this week, let's think about how we can follow God how we could follow that light, have him be our guide this week, and how we can really concentrate on obeying the things that he tells us and teaches us to really make us the best we can be. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I feel like I'm ready for anything when I've got you as my flashlight and my light and my guide and my compass feel very prepared for life in the real world. Thank you, God, for those things that you teach us. Thank you for helping us to follow those teachings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In God alone my soul finds rest. For my deliverance comes from God, who alone is my rock, my salvation, my fortress. I will never be shaken. Only in God, my deliverance, my glory, my refuge is God. Trust in God always, my people. Pour out your hearts before God, our refuge. Humankind is but a breath. Mortals are just an illusion. Put them on the scales, and the balance is thrown off. They weigh less than a breath. Do not trust in extortion, or put false hopes in stolen goods. Do not set your heart on riches, even when they increase. For God has said only one thing, 
twice I have heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, God. You repay all people according to their deeds. A couple of years ago, I received an excellent Christmas present from Dennis. These wonderful wireless headphones. They allow me to feel as if I am surrounded by the music I love. Through accident, I discovered another gift of these headphones. One day I walked too far away from the signal source and nothing. Complete silence. I discovered they are also noise-canceling headphones. Now, I never thought I needed or wanted noise-canceling headphones, but I discovered that sometimes silence is amazing. After the endless news cycle covering the protest, pandemic, the last election, I found myself craving silence, longing for peace, needing rest, wanting a break. Psalm 62 speaks to this need. The psalm reminds us that in God, the one who is holding our lives, we find rest. The psalmist even goes so far as to, as to suggest that waiting in silence with God is one of the highest forms of praise and one of the most profound ways that we can pray. I don't think we or our world really understand this kind of silence. We are constantly bombarded with noise. Sometimes we even think the louder and noisier we are, the better, because it gets, it gets us the most attention. The kind of silence the psalmist is talking about has long been a Christian practice, though. This idea of waiting and praying in silence is the cornerstone of the monastic life. Years ago, I was introduced to a group of writings called the Sayings of the Desert Fathers and Mothers. The Desert Fathers and Mothers were early Christian hermits and monks who lived mainly in the Skeets Desert of Egypt, beginning around the third century Common Era. They believe that silence is much deeper than an external quiet. German philosopher Meister Eckhart wrote, There is nothing so much like God as silence. There is nothing so much like God as silence. When we experience moments of external and then internal silence, when we find ourselves releasing words and simply entering into an experience of wonder and observing, this is the silence of God. Moments when we are arrested by life's beauty. It is when we rest in the silence of God that our souls, our, our very beings, find rest and renewal. It is when we rest in the silence of God that the Spirit can move in us and, and help reshape and remold us. Now, as much as I love these headphones and the silence they bring, I admit to forgetting to use them sometimes. Silence can be challenging. I create all kinds of distractions sometimes to keep from being silent. I turn on my music or the television, not to listen or watch, but to simply have the silence filled with sound. Many of us create all kinds of distractions and noise in our lives so we can avoid silence. Because as life-giving as silence can be, silence is also life-changing. And sometimes that can be frightening, maybe most frightening at church and on Sunday morning. As I was 
researching the monastic practice of silence, it came as no surprise that one of the great spiritual masters who was heavily influenced by the desert fathers and mothers, Thomas Burton, had something to say about silence. Especially people who go to church and lead spiritual lives but struggle with spending time with God in silence. Merton would look at who we are and ask how important some of our meetings are and how often we are simply silent together in God's presence. He said, interior solitude is impossible for some spiritual people. They fear it. They do everything they can to escape it. What is worse? They try to draw everyone else into activities as senseless and as devouring as their own. They are great promoters of useless work. They love to organize meetings and banquets and conferences and lectures. They print circulars, write letters, talk for hours on the phone in an order, all in order that they may gather a hundred people together in a large room where they will all fill the air with smoke and make a great deal of noise and roar at once and roar at one another and clap their hands and stagger home at last patting one another on the back with the assurance that they have all done great things to spread the kingdom of God. Merton is fierce in his critique of all the ways we cling to words, meetings, noise to feel productive while never making space to surrender into the unknowing of silence and experience silence as beyond all of our good words and intentions. Merton would suggest that silence is what makes our actions meaningful, not the other way around. I'm fascinated by Merton's words. As I said, he was influenced by the desert fathers and mothers who invited people to consider what it means to be selective about our words. They believed that cultivating silence was about making space for another voice to speak. So silence is a presence rather than an absence. The psalmist says, for God alone, my soul waits in silence. From God comes my salvation. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall never be shaken. My soul waits in silence. We live in a noisy world. There are days when we can barely find a moment of silence, whether in our homes or workplaces or in church or even in our inner lives as we fret about personal and social problems. There are days when we need to call time out, turn off the television, put down the newspaper and our news feeds, sign off Facebook, and simply be still with God. Silence, opening ourselves to God, allowing God time to reshape and remake us from within. Friends, this week I invite you to be still with God. Rest with God. This morning, as you consider the ways you can support the ministry of RPC, I invite you to a time of silence.
Each week we mail and email prayer concerns. I have an update. Please keep Janine Buttermer and her family in your prayers this week at the death of her father. This morning during prayer, I will offer prayers of concern, and then there will be times of silence so that you might turn to God in prayer. Let us pray for the leaders of this world and this church. God of justice, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who live in conflict around the world. Bringer of peace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are experiencing loss of any kind. Comforting healer, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are homeless, hungry, jobless, and alone. Emmanuel, God with us, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who live in comfort, for Christ-like hospitality and generosity transforming spirit. Hear our prayer. Holy and living God, for those who are known to us and the ones whose names we do not know, hear our prayer. God of all the ages, hear these and all our prayers and hear us as our time of prayer continues.
May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand.